All right, thanks for watching. And by popular demand, so one student asked me how to do this, uh, I want to do a little video to show how to show that the transformation is linear. And in fact, let's show the following transformation is a linear transformation. Namely, t of xy equals 2x minus y and x plus y is linear. So what this is, it's a transformation, so it's a function from the plane, so from two variables to the plane back, so from R2 to R2, that sort of shears and flips and stuff. And I want to show you rigorously from the definition why this is a linear transformation. So, first of all, I know lots of people like this notation. Let me show you a different kind of notation that's kind of neat, neater maybe. Namely, think of it in terms of vectors. T takes the vector x, y as an input and spits out the vector 2x minus y and x plus y. The reason I like this notation is because with this notation, it's easier to figure out the matrix of T, at least with respect to the standard basis, which would be 2 minus 1, 1 and 1. All right. Without using matrices, let me show you from the definition how, uh, why this is a linear transformation. What does linear mean? It means two things. First of all, it means that T of u plus v is Tu plus Tv. <laughs> Hope you're watching TV at the same time because it's TV time. Okay, so in other words, t of the sum of vectors is the sum of t those, of those vectors. So it's a very nice property to have, and in fact, lots of calculus students, they like functions to be linear. They write nonsense like square root of a plus b, it's square root of a plus square root of b. Oh, which is wrong, but... You see, it's nice if a function had this property, and that's precisely why linear transformations are nice. Okay, now let's show this. Well, let u here use a vector in R2, so let's call it xy, and v is another vector in R2, let's call it zt, and then let's calculate t of u plus v. t of u plus v by definition, this is just t of t of the vector x, y plus z, t. So I just use the definition of you know u and v. And notice you can write this of the form t of x plus z and y plus t. Okay, and maybe let me use colors. I think for this one it's actually very good to use color because I want to show you what happens here. So t of x plus z and y plus t and y plus t okay, Merry Christmas. So it's very important to understand what does t do? It takes two times, it takes this vector, and then it does two times the first component minus the second component. So what this becomes, it's two times x plus z minus y plus t. Because you see, before the components were x and y, here the components are x plus z and y plus t. And similarly here, it takes the first component and the second component and adds them together. So x plus z plus y plus t. Okay, very good. Then 
The next step is generally just to expand it out. So we get 2x plus 2z minus y minus t and x plus z plus y plus t. Okay. What's the next step? So, you could either do it this way, or you can just you know, calculate t of u plus t of v separately and see if it gives you the same answer. It's a perfectly acceptable way of doing this, but maybe there's a slightly more elegant way. Well, we would like to write it in terms of t of x, y, and for this we need a 2x minus y. So how about and we'll see in a second why this is useful. How about we just group x and y together and z and t together? Then we get 2x minus y and plus 2z minus t. And same thing above, let's group x and y together. So x plus y plus z plus t. Why is that useful? Notice this is 2x minus y and x plus y plus 2z minus t, z plus t. And if you use this awesome definition I gave you, notice this quantity that we have is just t of x comma y. So that is t of xy plus t of zt. Now I'm hungry. Makes me think of zt pasta. But anyway, so on the other hand, what is t of xy? Well, xy was just u. So this just becomes t of u plus t of v. Whoa! Why do I say whoa? Because we started with t of u plus v, and we show that it's equal to t of u plus t of v. And that's precisely what we wanted. So indeed, t of u plus v is t of u plus t of v. Now, let's do the other case, which is actually easier. The second requirement of a linear transformation is simply, if you multiply a vector u by a number, and you apply t to it, that should be the same thing as first doing t of u and then multiplying it by uh, the number. So, let's see. t of cu, again, sorry, before that, uh, again, u is a vector, so let u have components x and y. Then let's see. Literally, let's see. t of cu, that's t of c times x, y. But that's t of, and again, let me use colors, uh, cx and cy. And now, what we would like to do, we would like to use the definition of t, but instead of x and y, we put cx and cy. So this becomes 2 times cx plus, oh sorry, minus cy. And then, well, just the sum. So cx plus cy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's raining today in Irvine. Which is weird, because I thought there was this song, it never rains in Southern California. Well, I guess I should have read it correctly, because it says it seems it never rains in Southern California. So, not quite. <laughs> All right, so we have this. Notice there is a nice thing going on here. There is a common factor of C. And that's sort of very usual for linear transformations. So it's c times 2x minus y, and then c times x plus y. But notice, you have c here as a common factor. You can actually pull it out. And that's just the definition of a number times a vector. 
So it's c times 2x minus y and x plus y. And well, what is that? This is just, if you look back at the definition, that is c times t of xy. Let me put it in the same whiteboard. That's c of tu. So indeed, you have shown that t of cu is c of tu. And because t satisfies the two properties of being a linear transformation, it is indeed a linear transformation. It passed the two tests. So what do we need to know? So um, to show us something as a linear transformation, you have to check those two properties. And also, I think one thing that bugs a lot of people they might be stuck at some point. Well, whenever you're stuck, remember T has a definition. For example, here you might be like, hey, what do I do? Use the definition of T because I'm not giving you an arbitrary transformation. I give you precisely this one. All right, so I hope you like this linear algebra excursion. If you wanna see more math, please click like and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.